The Night Beat starts right now. A neighborhood evacuated as a brush fire destroys a home. Tonight, a look at the damage done and the dramatic events as crews battled these flames. It's really a pet owner's nightmare losing their pets. And tonight, a woman has a warning how her search for her dogs has threatened her safety. A partnership between Southside ISD and a local community college bringing new career opportunities to San Antonio. The training center, they're, they're going to open. But first. Now tonight, people near Bolverde Road and the TPC Parkway are finally returning home. They were actually forced to leave their homes because of this, because of a grass fire. Yeah, it's amazing video. I can't imagine being down there in the middle of it. Can't imagine that being my home. Officials tell us one home destroyed after the fire spread into a nearby neighborhood. The night team's Avery Everett has been there all afternoon. She joins us now. Avery, still an active scene out there. Yeah, you can't really tell because of how dark it is, but we can still smell and feel the smoke from that grass fire. And we do know that crews will continue to work overnight here as they check on hot spots. I mean, just a few hours ago, we spoke to families who are waiting on those evacuations to be lifted. Now we know tonight that one family is returning home to a completely destroyed house. The smoke was very heavy, very dark. A neighborhood on watch tonight after a grass fire near TPC Parkway spread more than 10 acres. The wind had shifted and drove the fire towards the neighborhood here. Nearly 50 homes evacuated, one destroyed. We brought as many trucks as fast as we could get here, but it got ahead of us. No one was hurt. It took six hours for crews to contain that fire. Firefighters have to deal with elevation, thick brush. Evacuations have since been lifted. Patrick Donahue says his neighborhood is lucky it didn't spread further. The properties out here, which are encouraged to stay natural, which means a lot of fuel for fires. With conditions under control, crews will still work overnight to treat hot spots. The rescue teams are just all over. It gives you a lot of confidence. Within the last hour, we checked in and the fire marshal was still investigating how this all started. As soon as we learn that, we'll keep you updated on KSAT.com. Reporting live, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. It's been a busy 24 hours for firefighters crews dealing with this grass fire last night. While the flames have been extinguished tonight, crews are still keeping an eye on hot spots in the area, making sure there's no threat to nearby homes. It all began about 7.30 last night behind a subdivision at Sunflower and Lake Horizon. That's near I-10 and North Foster Road. Around 45 acres were burned. No one was hurt. Now, earlier today, crews also had their hands full with a blaze at a home on West Lubbock and South Florida streets near Burbank High School. More than 20 fire units at one point were on scene. Again, nobody was hurt here. We're still working to find out how those flames started. And you see why we have the red flag warnings in effect for, for the high fire danger through Saturday. This is mainly from noon on through 9 p.m. tomorrow for the counties you see shaded here. But even if you're in an outlying county, there's still that higher than normal potential of if a fire does start, it could spread rapidly because of our conditions. We've dried out. The ground is dry. It's parched. A lot of fuel on the ground and in the afternoon, a relative humidity drops. Now that makes it feel better for us in terms of that lack of intense humidity, but that lack of humidity in the air helps those flames spread more quickly and more efficiently. Also, you add to it a southeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. We're going to talk more about ERCOT and the supply and demand outlook for our little heat wave here in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. Let's talk a little bit about it right now, though. Rising temperatures mean a bigger demand on that power grid. ERCOT issuing a weather watch for Sunday and Monday. What does that mean? ERCOT simply expects the potential for lower reserves given the higher energy demand. That hit an all time record on Tuesday with Texans using 83,593 megawatts. Ericot expects we could break that record next week. New on the night beat, a temporary exemption to the Texas abortion ban. A state judge has ruled doctors who terminate a complicated high risk pregnancy in a quote, good faith judgment, end quote, cannot be prosecuted. That judge says the exemption may be made based on certain conditions. If the pregnancy presents a risk for infection, 
If a doctor determines the fetus has a condition which it will not survive after birth, or if the mother has a condition that requires regular invasive treatment. Right now, state law allows for abortion only if the mother's life is in danger. The judge's temporary injunction stems from a lawsuit seeking clarification on when a medical emergency justifies an abortion. That case expected to go to trial in March. Deliberations are going to continue Monday morning in the O.L. Wallace murder trial. The 19-year-old is charged in a 2022 MLK Day shooting. Wallace is accused of killing a man and injuring four other people at Santa's Bar on the east side. The jury deliberated for several hours today before being sent home for the weekend. A heartbroken woman desperate to find her dog says she's quickly become the target of scammers. And as the night team's Patty Santos explains, she's warning pet owners against mistakes that put her safety at risk. So what they usually do is they'll come down this hill right here. They're country dogs. We've been here for over two and a half years. Carolyn Kale says her two Labradors went for a dip in the nearby creek and never came back. Normally, if they've ever gotten away from this area, somebody will see them. She did what most desperate pet owners do, posted flyers with her pictures. I first put out a sign that said cash reward. But that's when things, she says, got weird. I have some people calling me saying they have my dogs and it's an obscure time of the evening and they want me to go meet them somewhere to go pick them up. I live as she got multiple texts and calls of people who wanted to claim the cash reward and claim they had the dogs. One even said they worked for the city of San Antonio Animal Care Services. I didn't send anybody else any money um, because I had read about these things. So be very wary of anybody who's asking for money before they're able to uh, turn over your pet. Or Lisa Norwood with Animal Care Services warns people to safeguard information about their pets and themselves when posting a missing pet flyer. Don't include an actual 100% description of your pet. Norwood says don't include the names of the pets, locations, your full name, or the exact reward amount. It's been 24 days since Kale's dogs disappeared and her flyers all over town are almost sun faded, but not her hope. I don't know what happened to them, but I will not give up. And ACS wants to remind pet owners to make sure that they're microchipped and if they become lost, then make sure you contact that company and let them know that. They also want to make sure that you stay in constant communication with your local shelter in case the pets turn up. We have more resources on KSAT.com. Reporting live tonight, Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Patty. 33 years to the day she disappeared. 11-year-old Heidi Siemens, 1990 kidnapping and murder remains unsolved. Weeks later, seven-year-old Eric Bateo was kidnapped. The girls' bodies were eventually found miles apart. Their cases were deemed unrelated, and no arrests have been made in either case. Take a look back at both investigations right now on KSAT.com. And now let's go to your night beat news flash. Still no sign of a breakthrough in Hollywood as thousands of writers and actors took to the streets today in North Hollywood. And while that was happening, union leaders with the Writers Guild met with studio executives to discuss whether they'd resume negotiations. Now, at this point, it's still unclear as to what they decided. By the way, the Writers Guild has been on strike since May 2nd. They want artificial intelligence to be regulated, and they're also asking the studios to pay them more money for residuals on streaming platforms. Not guilty. That's what former President Donald Trump pleaded today over the classified documents case. Trump is accused of mishandling classified documents from his time in the White House. This marks the second time in the last 24 hours that the former president has pleaded not guilty to criminal charges. Yesterday, he was in court and denied allegations that he plotted to overturn the 2020 election. Talk about Chaos. Yeah, that was in New York City. At least six people had to be sent to the hospital in New York City this afternoon after thousands overran Union Square Park. Investigators say that this was after a Twitch streamer announced that he would be giving out free video games in Union Square. 
ABC 7 in New York reports that some people in the crowd started throwing things at other people, also throwing things at police. They were climbing on top of cars. The NYPD says that it took dozens of people into custody. And right now, crews are cleaning up all the mess that was left behind there in Union Square. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. So, summer is winding down for students and groups across South Texas are stepping up to make sure they're ready for school. Big Mama's Safe House held its back to school resource fair today. Kids went there, got their supplies, vaccinations, even fresh haircuts. Now, if you missed out, don't worry because there are several school supply giveaways tomorrow. We'll start with this one. San Antonio City Council District 10 is going to offer free backpacks and supplies on a first come first serve basis at the Blessed Angels Community Center and that's from 9 to noon. Then we have District's 5 Resource Fair at Burbank High School also goes for the same time 9 to noon. District 2 will also hold an event at the Duseum from 6 to 8 30 tomorrow night and registration is open for the Spurs back to school bash tomorrow afternoon at the AT&T Center, soon to be Frost Bank Center. That's from 2 until 5 in the afternoon. Parents must register, though, for the Spurs Bash. You can find that link right now on KSAT.com. The Northside School District is thinking out of the box to hire more teachers. We're going to learn about what they're doing right before class is back in session. We'll bring the opportunity to have a, um, an occupation and a living wage and serve others. Most importantly, it's serving your neighbors in your community. A new education center looking to resolve a statewide issue where and when the center will open next. Also this, don't forget to get your tickets for this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic. They're on sale right now. You can find that information on KSAT.com. Just scan that QR code that you see on your screen to get all your ticket options. It kicks off on the 25th, and then we'll have a triple header on the 26th. We'll be right back. A glitch affecting Wells Fargo direct deposits still being resolved at this hour. The bank says a limited number of customers were affected by a system error that started yesterday. We asked Wells Fargo about this issue this afternoon in an emailed statement. It says, quote, the vast majority have been resolved and the few remaining issues will be resolved soon. We sincerely apologize for any inconvenience, end quote. Customers who are still having issues should contact Wells Fargo directly. One local school district is taking a new tactic to staff its classrooms, and it's rehiring teachers who have already retired. Northside ISD has 233 teacher vacancies as of today, but it's already hired 23 retired teachers on a one-year contract. The district is trying to make an offer that retirees can't refuse. That retired individual who is eligible now to be rehired, they continue to receive their annuity, they receive their salary from Northside, they will also receive that retention payment of $1,200. Okay, well those teachers are also going to receive the district's recent 3% pay raise, and those people who are eligible had to have been retired for at least one year, and they have to meet all the district qualifications. By the way, Northside schools are going to return to class on August 28th. A new addition to San Antonio aims to help with the state's nursing shortage. The Southside Education and Training Center will host Palo Alto College's nursing program. The $23 million building will also offer adult education, literacy classes, and workforce training programs. The training center, a partnership between Palo Alto and Southside ISD, paid for by a 2017 Alamo College's bond package. Ribbon cutting scheduled for next weekend. And now we're going to take a live look outside. Yeah, 91 degrees out there right now. And Steve, you were just talking about uh, nursing shortages. I'm thinking hopefully we won't deal with a power shortage. It's something that, that ERCOT is concerned about. Yeah, and we're, we, we should have enough power. Let's put that out there right away. We should have enough. It's just ERCOT put out that weather watch because the supply and demand the forecast for it's going to get pretty close. So here's what we have from ERCOT. And these numbers represent the peak usage and the peak demand parts of the day. And notice how particularly on Sunday, that top blue line, which is the predicted supply, is just a little bit higher than the red line, which is the predicted demand. 
again, we are expecting to have enough power. It's just one of those situations where it's a good idea to conserve energy as much as you can in the hottest part of the day in particular. Tomorrow, we start the day 79 degrees at 7 a.m. By noon, we're up to 93. 104, the high temperature, basically a carbon copy of today. That, by the way, would tie the record high for the day tomorrow. Pleasanton up to 107. Carrizo Springs 108, along with Catula. Del Rio 108 for the high temperature tomorrow. Stone Oak 104, Elmendorf 106. And look at this trend going forward. We only step up a little bit more. So whatever your temperature is tomorrow or in, and this weekend in general, add on another degree or two for next week. We'll be 105 in San Antonio by Monday and then even up to 106 on Thursday. Now, four of the next seven days, I do think we are likely to tie or even break the record highs. Now, today we broke a record high, 105. The official reading at the airport that's a record by two degrees the average high being 97. notice the high temperatures across our area all above 100 except rock springs at 99 we think that's going to change for rock springs tomorrow and throughout the entire weekend del rio by the way the high of 107 that was a record in del rio and you look at the big picture the heat of course concentrated over the desert southwest and even here in texas we're on the Background, you see these pink colors indicating the hottest temperatures. No surprise, that's where we have the upper level heat high. It's split right now, but it is going to be merging westward a little bit more. Now, previously, earlier this week, yesterday and days before, you know, we were showing this high closer to Phoenix and Tucson. Now the guidance is indicating yeah, it's probably going to be a centered a little bit eastward and stay planted over Texas, most likely West Texas in the extended forecast. But let's quickly look at the tropics. It's actually very quiet, which is typically more indicative of an El Nino hurricane season. It's quiet right now. No potential development in the Atlantic at the moment in the Pacific. And we look at the Pacific because sometimes we get leftover moisture or remnants of these systems that can produce rain. Now there's likely to be a system here that's now south of Mexico. 90% chance of developing into a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm, possibly a hurricane thereafter. Notice that its trajectory will be off, basically paralleling the Mexican coastline and then some leftover moisture making it into California into next week. Nothing to move our way. By the way, if you're headed to the beach or the bay, if you're fishing on the bays, it's going to be choppy. It's going to be a little bouncy in the boat, so be prepared for that with the southeast wind at 15 to 25 knots and higher gusts along the Gulf Shore, about two foot seas, and of course a lot of sunshine and in the lower 90s. A sunny, dry pattern is going to persist with morning low temperatures at and even slightly above 80 next week. Okay, thank you. All right, so the Cowboys training camp, you've got good on good. So <laughs> what do the receivers think about the defensive backs? Well, in particular, the receivers are really impressed with Stephon Gilmore, who the Cowboys signed during the offseason. He's been one of the best corners in the NFL for a very long time. And Lamb dropping a very nice compliment about, compliment about number 21. Plus, in college football, Joe Evans is getting ready for his second season at UTSA. Man, a successful year to me is winning the Super Bowl. Uh, regardless of what my numbers look like, obviously we need a thousand plus. Uh, but I'm not really too. I'm not too fond on that. I need. I, I want to earn. It's Super Bowl championship or bust for C.D. Lamb and the Cowboys in Big Board Sports. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Wearing his red and white Nike high tops, Dak Prescott on the Dallas Cowboys had the walkthrough this morning at training camp in Oxnard, California. Their second walkthrough this week. The boys are not shy when it comes to Super Bowl talk because they feel that they have the team to reach the big game. Not that they just need to back. Now they just need to back it up. Sorry. Now one reason they're dreaming big is because of the addition of corner Stephon Gilmore. CeeDee Lamb is very impressed with the five-time pro bowler. He's the smartest defensive back I've ever lined up against. Um, rather, if I, if I line up, he knows the, the certain routes off of my alignment, and it sucks. So uh, <laughs> it's really chess. It's chess with him. Um, you're not just really running a route, and, and I feel like that's making me better. So understanding if I come across a patient DB or a smart one, um, it's not going to be my first. And, um, yeah, it's like he's done this before. 
Safety Malik Hooker is having a solid camp, which is part of the reason why the boys signed him to a three-year contract extension with up to $24 million. That includes an $8 million signing bonus and $16.5 mil guaranteed. With rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud on the roster, the Houston Texans feel good about their future, and the franchise also believes they have the right head coach as well in D'Amico Ryans. With 11 total wins in the last three seasons, he's got a tall mountain to climb. He's been described as a no-nonsense coach, and there's a reason for that. I am a coach who's going to shoot it straight to the guys, right? They're, these guys have a limited amount of time in their careers, and we know low, we don't know how long their career will be. So for me, is I'm not going to sugarcoat it to a player to make him feel good. It's on me. I'm going to tell players the truth, whether they like it or not, because I know in the end, right, they'll respect me more by telling them the truth. And that's the type of coach I am. Ryans and the Texans will kick off their preseason schedule Thursday night at 6 at the Patriots. The UTSA Roadrunners held their third practice of fall camp this morning at the practice fields on the main campus. Number 94, Joe Evans, is looking to make an impact along the defensive line. Last season as a junior, the LSU transfer played in 11 games for UTSA, and he registered 18 total tackles, 8 solo stops, 3.5 tackles for loss, 1.5 sacks, and 2 QB hurries. Now that he's in his second season with the Roadrunners, how is this time around different compared to last season? I feel like it's more, it's more surreal for me. Um, just like being able to play another year, you know, it's, I mean, it's UTSA football, so it's, you know, it's, uh, the, the stakes are higher, new conference. Joe is the cousin of 10-year NFL veteran and Super Bowl champion Doug Evans and former NFL player Demetric Evans. San Antonio FC has won four of its last five matches, and they want to keep their hot streak going on the road to Phoenix Rising FC. SAFC is second in the West. Phoenix sits eighth, holding the final playoff spot. Goalkeeper Jordan Farr knows the opponent very well. I know the coach personally, played with Juan. Uh, amazing guy, but he's the enemy Saturday. So uh, it doesn't really matter what, what former things we have with a lot of the guys know uh, on the team know their players as well and so all that matters is treating this like a playoff match like we do every every game and and coming with the sole purpose of getting three points um, whatever way possible we want to bring our game we want to make them play the way we want to play but ultimately it's about gr grinding out three points the rising will host SAFC tomorrow at 9 30 p.m. local time the Astros get even in New York after the break Jordan and the Astros bounced back in the Big Apple tonight to even the series with the Yankees at one all. Top of the fifth inning, Astros are leading 4-1 to one when Jordan Alvarez goes way deep to left center field, 428 feet. His 20th touch them all this season. The Astros win 7-3. Justin Verlander is scheduled to pitch for the Astros tomorrow. The Rangers at home tonight opening a three-game series with the Miami Marlins. Bottom three, Adelise Garcia goes the opposite way down the right field line for a solo job, and the Rangers take the lead 3-2. Bottom six, same score when Adelise goes yard again, 433 feet to center field. Shots 27 and 28 for him, and the Rangers take it 6-2. to two. And in Texas League play, the Missions edged out the Travelers tonight 4-3. to three. You get a win. You get a win. You get a win. All those Texas teams yeah. get a win. Yeah. Exactly. It's a good Friday. <laughs> we'll be right back. We have a lot heading your way tomorrow on GMSA, including the impact of all this intense heat on our dogs. We're going to share some ways to keep them healthy and safe as these dog days of summer continue. That's tomorrow on GMSA. Before you go, a quick reminder to get your tickets for this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic. They're on sale right now. Just scan this QR code to see all of the ticket options that are out there. It kicks off on the 25th of this month followed by our triple header inside the dome on the 26th. Inside is important to emphasize. Inside. Yes. Yes. All right, here's a quick look at satellite imagery from June 11th. Look how green it was over Texas and San Antonio. Now we put the slider to today. Yikes. Big change. We have dried out quite a bit. Yikes. We need rain. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, for keeping us company all week. Have a wonderful weekend. Please stay cool. See you back on Monday.